Hey, a friend, Chris here from WhiteLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to talk about Chroma Glow. Chroma Glow is a relatively new distortion plugin that came out with Logic Pro for Mac 11 and Logic Pro for iPad 2 just a little while ago. And what it brings to the table is the sound of tapes, tubes, preamps, and other analog gear. And it does this by leveraging AI and machine learning on Apple Silicon. I gotta say, I don't personally have a need to go searching for that next third-party plugin that promises the vibe and saturation and depth and subtle or aggressive compression that analog gear provides because now it's built right into Logic Pro with Chroma Glow. And I gotta say, I'm even leery of buying any third-party plugins at this point because, you know, we've had so many new instruments, so many new plugins over the last couple of years. I don't know, is, is Apple gonna introduce that tool that I've been looking for in the next couple of months? So I gotta just say, I'm so stoked on Chroma Glow. I'm so stoked on this update. And I want to show you a project where I've sprinkled this saturation plugin throughout the project. And I want to show you what it brings to the table for this project and give you some ideas for how you can best implement Chroma Glow for your own projects. Let's dig into it. On screen, I have a short recording of a buddy of mine playing a portion of a cover, which he both sang and played acoustic guitar. Then I added instances of keyboard player, bass player, drummer, and a little glockenspiel. Then, of course, I added plugin processing, balanced the arrangement, and as you can see in the mixer, there are several instances of Chroma Glow at various stages on track stacks, individual tracks. And I also am processing the entire project as a whole with an instance of Chroma Glow on the stereo output. So plenty going on here. Take a listen with Chroma Glow on. Then we'll listen to a portion of the recording with Chroma Glow at the various stages turned off. Then we'll do a direct comparison back to back as we listen. Here we go. Well, they try hard. All right, so there's our little portion of a cover. Maybe you know the song. Now let me pop open the mixer and just select a couple of these channel strips. I'm not gonna select every instance of Chroma Glow, but this should be enough. And then I'll bypass these five instances. I'll take a listen and pay special attention to just the dynamics of the mix. Does the mix still feel gelled together and cohesive? Or do certain tracks kind of lurch out at you? Does the mix feel a little looser than it did before? Take a listen. Well, they try hard to put me in my place And that is why I gotta keep running The future is mine and it's no disgrace Cause in the end the past means nothing You tell me I'm All right, so let's do a direct comparison back to back. We'll listen with Chroma Glow on and as we listen, I'll bypass the plugin and then reintroduce it. Here we go. Well, they tried hard I recognize that's a pretty subtle effect. I made it a point to be relatively subtle with these instances of Chroma Glow because a little can go a long way when you're stacking this effect at various stages. But to my ears, with the instances of Chroma Glow in place, the mix feels tighter, it feels more cohesive, gelled together, and yet there's a depth to it. It just sounds nice. And if we take a look at some of these instances that I've introduced to these five different channel strips, you can see on the acoustic guitars, I have the retro tube model in place but the drive is set to zero. You would think it's not doing anything at all. And yet it adds some harmonic content, a little bit of saturation and gluing effect to the guitars. If we take a look at the glockenspiel, again, retro tube, 15%, just a little bit, a little sauce on these tracks. For the piano, I have the analog preamp model with the drive set to 20%. For the drums and bass, retro tube, again, set to a drive of 20%. 
And then if we take a look at the entire stereo project, I have modern tube set to 20%, right? So there's a lot going on here. If I just focus on these four tracks right here, take a listen again as I bypass and reintroduce. Well, they try hard to put me in my place And that is why I gotta keep running The future is mine and it's no disgrace Cause in the end the past means nothing You tell me I'm free then you tie me It's subtle, but it's pretty awesome. Let's now hone in on just the drums and bass, which I placed in a track stack together. So I have drummer through a producer kit and bass player, some to a track stack. And just to make it easier to identify, let me change the color here. Let me open Chroma Glow and let's quickly go through the various options. Obviously, Retro Tube and Modern Tube are set to emulate the sound of tube bass gear, each imparting harmonic saturation and a subtle gluing effect that is very pleasant to the ears. While Magnetic, on the other hand, emulates the sound, saturation, and compression of a tape machine. Squeeze brings the sound of analog compression to Logic Pro, while analog preamp brings the mid forward sound of a preamp. So take a listen now as I drive up retro tube for the bass and the drums combined. All right, so I have the drive basically to 100%. Do know I have the style for retro tube set to clean. Each model has two different styles that you can choose from. For most, it could be either clean or colorful. Now we're getting a little bit of grit and distortion that sounds a little edgy. Yet there's also this pleasing effect of the smoothing of transients, this analog type of saturation that's occurring. If I set this back to clean and bring up the level, right? There's just this cool gluing effect. And especially when you set the drive to something much more subtle, and tasteful, it adds a vibe and gluing effect that's almost imperceptible until you bypass Chroma Glow. And that's like, where did the magic go? So now, if I undo and set this to modern, let's take a listen. All right, that's pretty aggressive. Let me back it off a hair. It just sounds nice. The warmth, the gelling effect, the subtle saturation. I really dig it. If we set this to magnetic, so now it's a tape machine and not a two bass machine. Magnetic can add this nice sheen and top end to your tracks. Again, if you set it to more subtle effect and not driving it so hard. And then we have Squeeze, which is kind of like a combo of compressors. If you think of like the 1176 LA-2A combo that's very popular for vocals, which I'll show you momentarily, it can really squash a signal. I can hear the sustain of the drums being dredged up with squeeze. It sounds pretty cool, honestly, especially if we play with the mix control and blend this effect like parallel compression.
That's pretty cool. Now, if I set this back down, let's now take a listen to analog preamp. This is a very mid forward sound. It sounds kind of lo fi, actually. Take a listen. When I first heard the analog preamp emulation, I thought to myself, I don't really see myself ever using this, honestly, because you can hear the top end of these two tracks have been rolled off completely. However, I realized when you have a track that needs to be more mid-forward or have that lo-fi effect and sound, analog preamp is the perfect model for these occasions. Also, don't overlook the bypass below parameter, which can be really helpful when you want to add a lot of saturation and harmonic content to a track. So if we listen again to the modern tube here, In this case, I'm driving Chroma Glow really hard for the bass and the drums. And when you have a track that has a lot of low end content, that can cause compressors and distortion to sound blown out. When I turn on bypass below in Chroma Glow, everything below a set frequency will now be completely omitted from this drive and distortion. Take a listen. There's still some edgy distortion, but the low end of the bass and the kick are not hitting the ceiling of Chroma Glow and just further blowing things out. So if I drive things down a bit. It sounds way cleaner. All right. So already I've shown you a number of tactics that you can take when using Chroma Glow for your own projects. By adding subtle amounts of Chroma Glow to different tracks, track stacks, you can add that subtle saturation, gluing effect, depth, all these sorts of things. Plus, you can process the entire project as a whole using Chroma Glow. It can really tighten things up and add that final polish that you've been looking for for your projects. If I bypass just this one instance on the stereo out, well, they try hard to put me in my place. And that is kind of comes alive a little, doesn't it? But one other tactic that I think is really worth looking into when it comes to vocal mixing is the squeeze model. You can see here I'm squeezing the main vocal by 60%. I have the style set to soft press, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't choose hard press. But this is a simple one-stop shop for compressing your vocals. If we take a listen to before and after. Well, they try hard to put me in my place, and that is I mean, that's pretty freaking awesome. If I open this instance of the compressor at the very end of my vocal chain, I want you to take a look at the graph inside compressor as I bypass and reintroduce Chroma Glow so you can both hear and see the changes in the dynamics. Take a listen and a look. Well, they tried hard to put me in my place And that is why I gotta keep running The future is mine and it's no disgrace Cause in the end the past is nothing You tell me you're free then you tie me down From my chains I think it's a pity What did it cost you to wear my crown? If you don't like me, why don't you admit it? You I don't think there's enough good things that can be said about Chroma Glow. This fills such a tremendous need for your projects, for your sounds, and just makes life so much easier. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Wide Logic Per Rules here on the channel or on the website. And please be sure to check out the description below where I always include links to PDFs, guides, templates to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.